Wally Zerbiak was a knockdown shooter from wherever that could hit a three-pointer whenever called upon, becoming a great second option as no one could double off of Zerbiak, helping Wally Zerbiak become an all-star along the way before his career would be derailed by injuries, creating the unfortunate all-too-common scenario of what if he was healthy throughout his career. This is a look back on Wally Zerbiak's career. Wally Zerbiak was born in Madrid, Spain, as his dad Walt Zerbiak was playing professional basketball for Real Madrid and was a former ABA player. Wally Zerbiak spent a lot of his youth growing up overseas as a result, before moving back to the States when his dad retired from playing basketball. Wally Zerbiak moved to Cold Spring Harbor, New York, where he played his high school basketball at Cold Spring Harbor High School. And while there, Zerbiak dominated the competition, averaging 36.6 points and 15.9 rebounds his senior year. But he was putting up large numbers in a small high school that did not play much big competition, seeing Wally Zerbiak get under-recruited in rather little. As a result, Wally Zerbiak would commit to the Miami of Ohio to play his college ball. In Zerbiak's first two years, he was a role player on the team before breaking out his junior season, becoming first team All-Mac, missing several games along the way though with wrist problems. Wally Zerbiak his senior year was healthy and took his game to the next level, averaging 24.2 points, 2.9 assists, and 8.5 rebounds, picking up the MAC Player of the Year and a second team All-American. Miami of Ohio would get an NCAA tournament berth as a 10 seed, and Miami won its first round matchup against Washington with the team hopping on the back of Wally Zerbiak where he scored a game high and career high in college of 43 points. Round 2 Miami met the two seeded Utah led by Andre Miller where Miami pulled off the upset behind Serbiak's 24 points, becoming a Cinderella team, making it into the Sweet 16. The run would stop there, though, against Kentucky, but Wally Zerbiak had played well again, scoring 23 points in the game to end his college career. With the good season topped by stepping it up his play when it mattered most in the NCAA tournament, Wally Zerbiak had shot up draft boards, because who doesn't want a shooter? In the 1999 NBA Draft, Wally Zerbiak was selected by the Minnesota Timberwolves with the 6th overall pick. Zerbiak was joining a Timberwolves team led by Kevin Garnett and Terrell Brandon. In year 1, Wally Zerbiak spent a little over half the time starting, fitting in very nicely alongside Garnett because they could not double off of Zerbiak onto him, seeing Wally Zerbiak average 11.6 points, 2.8 assists, and 3.7 rebounds making the all-rookie first team as the Timberwolves went 50-32, and 32, making the playoffs as a sixth seed, getting a round one matchup against a balanced Portland Trailblazers team with Rasheed Wallace, Scottie Pippen, Steve Smith, Damon Stoudemire, and Arvidas Sabonis. The series was close at times, but when it mattered most, Minnesota turned over the ball and often missed key shots. The Blazers behind Pippen sent home the Timberwolves 3-1. Wally Zerbiak's first postseason was one he wished he had back as he struggled being defended by Pippen and Smith, averaging 6 points, 2 rebounds, while hitting 0 three-pointers over the series. In the offseason, the Minnesota Timberwolves would be caught for making one of the worst decisions in franchise history. The Timberwolves had made an under-the-deal table with Joe Smith where he would sign three one-year deals in a row at a really low value giving the team the right to his bird rights so the team would be allowed to sign him and go over the cap to a 7 year $86 million deal, which was of course against the rules because the Timberwolves had technically signed him to a 10 year deal when all added up the two years prior which would have sent the team over the cap. The Minnesota Timberwolves picked up the largest punishment for an organization in NBA history, being fined $3.5 million which adjusted to today is $6.38 million. The team also saw Joe Smith's contract be voided and lost its next four first round picks. All added up, the move would see the Minnesota Timberwolves in most people's opinions and eyes squander Kevin Garnett's prime. Wally Zerbiak and the Minnesota Timberwolves would push on though, as Zerbiak grew into a full-time starter and the third option on the team, averaging 14 points, 3.2 assists, and 5.5 rebounds. Wally Zerbiak this season also had picked up the Rising Stars Challenge MVP helping Minnesota go 47-35, and 35, barely getting into the playoffs as an 8 seed, facing Tim Duncan, David Robinson, and the San Antonio Spurs round 1, where Duncan and the Spurs, to no surprise, picked them apart, winning the series 3-1. Wally Zerbiak over the series had put up similar numbers to the regular season, averaging 14 points, 2.5 assists, and 4.5 rebounds. Next season saw Terrell Brandon struggling to stay on the court for the team with injuries, with the Timberwolves needing Zerbiak to play a larger role within the offense, and Wally Zerbiak would deliver. 
averaging 18.7 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 3.1 assists, shooting 45.5% from three, helping Wally Zerbiak make the all-star team for his first time. Behind Zerbiak's improved form, the Timberwolves improved slightly, going 50 and 32, getting the five seed in a series against the Dallas Mavericks, who are headed by Dirk Nowinski, Steve Nash, and Michael Finley, creating a phenomenal matchup on paper at the power forward of Dirk versus Garnett. However, it did not last very long as Dirk outplayed Garnett, leading the Mavericks to a sweep of the Timberwolves. Over the series, Wally Serbiak continued his strong regular season form, averaging 20 points, 2 assists, and 7 rebounds. Next season, Terrell Brandon was out the whole entire year with a knee injury that ended his career, putting the future of the Timberwolves in Garnett and Serbiak's hands now. Next season, Wally Serbiak continued his form, averaging 17.6 points, 2.6 assists, and 4.6 rebounds. In only 52 games has he missed time with injuries, which would become a reoccurring thing going forward with knee and ankle issues. Wally Zerbiak did make franchise history this season though, as he scored 44 points in a game, which tied a then record for the team franchise. Despite Zerbiak being banged up, the Timberwolves still went 51-31, getting a 4 seed thanks to Kevin Garnett, earning a round 1 matchup against Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and the Los Angeles Lakers. The Timberwolves would jump out on top of the Lakers early on, getting a 2-1 series lead as Garnett was looking like a superstar and Troy Hudson was elevating his play. Yet afterwards, Shaq and Kobe took control over the series, winning three straight, sending Minnesota home. Over the series, Wally Serbiak played solidly but not quite at his full strength, averaging 14.5 points, 2.5 assists, and 5 rebounds. The Minnesota Timberwolves would have a big offseason, making two separate trades that brought in Latrell Sprewell and Sam Cassell without having to give up very much. With the additions, Zerbiak's role did shrink some, but the ultimate reason for his shrinkage in playing time and decrease was another injury, resulting in Wally Zerbiak only being able to go for 28 games, all of them coming off the bench, averaging 10.2 points, 1.2 assists, and 3.1 rebounds. Serbiak being banged up definitely hurt the team, but not as much as it once did as the additions of Cassell and Sprewell helped the Timberwolves go 58-24, and clinching the one seed. Round 1, the Minnesota Timberwolves would face the Denver Nuggets, led by our rookie in Carmelo Anthony and Andre Miller. The Timberwolves took care of business this series, winning comfortably 4-1. to On the downside, Wally Zerbiak's injury problems rose again, only going for three of the games. Round 2, awaiting the Timberwolves were a balanced Kings team with Chris Webber, Mike Bibby, Peja Stojakovic, Doug Christie, Brad Miller, and Vlade Divac. The Kings looked like the better team throughout, but Kevin Garnett was the best player in the series, resulting in the series going to a Game 7, which was a tight contest where Garnett again was taking it to the Kings, seeing the team hold on to a victory late as Chris Webber missed the game-tying shot at the buzzer. Wally Zerbiak did return from injury this series in Game 5. In the Western Conference Finals, the Minnesota Timberwolves met the team that had sent them home the prior year in the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers behind Kobe and Shaq jumped out to an early lead on the Timberwolves, seeing the chances for a comeback in the series fall apart as Sam Cassell picked up an injury, sending the Minnesota Timberwolves home in six games. Where if the Minnesota Timberwolves had been fully healthy with Sam Cassell and Wally Zerbiak, who knows, they may have made it into the NBA Finals. Over the postseason run to the Western Conference Finals, in the games that Wally Serbiak did play, he averaged 11.8 points, 1.7 assists, and 3.3 rebounds. Next season, the Minnesota Timberwolves brought back the majority of its core, and Serbiak was healthy for the first time in a while, coming off the bench, but earned some starts later on in the year. Wally Zerbiak on the season averaged 15.5 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 2.4 assists. But as Wally Zerbiak was refining his form, the opposite was happening for Latrell Sprewell, as his play was becoming even more sporadic than usual and butting heads with the front office for a new contract. On top of this, Sam Cassell missed several games, resulting in the Timberwolves going from the number one seed in the playoffs to missing them entirely, going 44-38. and In the offseason, the Timberwolves traded away Sam Cassell, fearing future injury problems as he was starting to get older and Latrell Sprewell would also be gone and out of the league, being unwilling to accept contract that was smaller for various teams. Wally Zerbiak again was the second option to Kevin Garnett, but the team struggled this season as the punishment of losing four first round picks was really starting to affect the team, so the Timberwolves decided to trade Wally Zerbiak in hopes of rebuilding around Kevin Garnett. Wally Zerbiak was traded with Dwayne Jones, Michael Oluokwandi, 
in a future first round pick that became Johnny Flynn to the Boston Celtics for Marcus Banks, Mark Blount, Ricky Davis, Justin Reed, and two second round picks that became Craig Smith and Nikola Pekovic. Serbiak was now on an equally struggling team in the Celtics, led by Paul Pierce. Serbiak's role was similar to that it was in Minnesota, he was just now the right hand man to Paul Pierce instead, ending the year playing very solidly, averaging 19 points, 3 assists, and 4.3 rebounds, as the Celtics missed the playoffs going 33 and 49. Wally Serbiak kept a similar role entering next season, but the injury problems ramped up again, with knee and ankle issues throughout, ending with Serbiak playing in 32 games, averaging 15 points, 1.7 assists, and 3.1 rebounds. With Wally out, the Boston Celtics slipped even further, going 24-58, and 58, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, the Celtics knew it had to do something to shake things up in order to keep Paul Pierce happy resulting in Wally Serbiak being in a league-altering move. Serbiak was traded with Jeff Green, Delonte West, and a future second-round draft pick that became Trent Placed to the Seattle Supersonics for Ray Allen and Glenn Davis. The Sonics were in a full rebuild mode, headed by Kevin Durant, and Serbiak was healthy and playing, but not quite at the form he once was, lacking the agility he once had. The Sonics were not competing and decided to continue the rebuild further. Wally Zerbiak would be a part of a three-team trade that involved 11 players and several picks, with Zerbiak ending up on the Cleveland Cavaliers looking to make a playoff push behind LeBron James and Zydrunas Silgowskis. Wally Zerbiak, like many times before, was brought in to make sure players would not help off him to double on LeBron James, as Wally Zerbiak was an efficient and effective shooter. Zerbiak as a role player a part of the second unit on the season averaged 11.5 points, 2.9 rebounds, and 1.4 assists as the Cleveland Cavaliers went 45-37, and 37, making it into the playoffs as a four seed. Facing the Washington Wizards round one, led by Anton Jameson, Kron Butler, and Gilbert Arenas. But Arenas was out with injury, and the Cavs would go up 3-1 thanks to a game winner from Delonte West, before dropping game five as Adrunas Hilgowskis and LeBron James missed last second shots. Cleveland would put away the Wizards rather soundly in Game 6, behind a big performance from Wally Zerbiak scoring 26 points with 6 threes, where Zerbiak found himself meeting his prior team in the next round in the Boston Celtics, now led by Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Rajon Rondo, and Paul Pierce. The series seemed to be highlighted by the importance of home court advantage as the home team consistently won solidly, with the series going to a Game 7. In Game 7, LeBron James kept the Cavs around with a big performance, but his play alone was not enough as the Celtics defeated them before going on to win the NBA championship this season. Over the postseason, Wally Zerbiak had found himself in a starting role again, averaging 10.8 points, 1.5 assists, and 1.8 rebounds, spacing the floor for LeBron James rather nicely. In the offseason, the Cavaliers improved, bringing in Mo Williams to be the second option to LeBron James. With the move, the lineups were adjusted back, from prior to the playoffs, as Zerbiak was coming off the bench again, playing slightly missed minutes, averaging 7 points, 3.1 rebounds, and 1.1 assists. Meanwhile, the Cavs thrived, as the move for Williams was paying off, as the Cavs went 66-16, and making the playoffs as the one seed. Round 1, the Cavaliers met the Detroit Pistons, led by Allen Iverson, Tayshawn Prince, and Richard Hamilton, and the series ended up being rather lopsided as Iverson was out, with the Cavs sweeping the Pistons. Round 2 was more of the same for Cleveland as they swept Joe Johnson, Josh Smith, and the Atlanta Hawks. Making it to the Eastern Conference Finals, Cleveland got a series against the Orlando Magic with Dwight Howard, Rashard Lewis, and Hito Turkoglu. The Cavs entered the series as heavy favorites with everyone thinking the Finals was going to get a matchup of LeBron versus Kobe, with even the commercials thinking so. Orlando, though, had other plans, taking Game 1 on a late shot from Lewis. Game 2, LeBron James tied the series back up, hitting an iconic fading 3 at the buzzer. But the Orlando Magic now had confidence, knowing that they could beat the Cavs, winning the next two games, taking a 3-1 lead. Cleveland did pull one back thanks to LeBron's play, but dropped Game 6 as Dwight Howard dominated them, sending the Magic to the NBA Finals. Over the run to the Eastern Conference Finals, Wally Serbiak's role shrunk, henceforth his numbers followed, to 3.6 points and 2.3 rebounds. At this time, Serbiak's knee was giving him problems again as he entered free agency, though a couple teams still did want his services, and he ended up having surgery that revealed that his left knee had so little cartilage left that it was pushed any further, 
it would likely result in him being difficult to even live a normal life. Wally Zerbiak's career was officially over. Zerbiak over 10 years in the NBA averaged 14.1 points, 4 rebounds, and 2.4 assists. Wally Zerbiak in retirement took a job continuing to stay around basketball as an analyst for CBS and college basketball, and eventually joining the New York Knicks as an analyst as well. Wally Zerbiak will be remembered for his elite shooting, whether it was for the three-point line or a mid-range shot, helping him carve out a solid career in the NBA as the perfect right-hand man because you could never double off of him or else you were giving up three points. Seeing Wally Zerbiak become an NBA All-Star before knee and ankle injuries derailed a promising career, yet continued on for as long as he could, making several deep playoff runs on a couple of teams. And who knows, a healthy Wally Zerbiak maybe pushes the Minnesota Timberwolves into the finals one year. Zerbiak simply knew how to play the complementary role to near perfection. Thanks for watching this video on Wally Zerbiak's career. If you want to see any other videos in the future about any other random NBA players, leave them in the comments below and I may or may not decide to do them. Who knows? Thanks again for watching. This has been Skid Denver.